Alright, so this is our Electrocram crash course. First thing we have to know to be able to do is find oxidation states. So if we have SO3, we have to be able to find the oxidation state of sulfur. So we take negative 2, 3 times negative 2 is equal to negative 6. Since there's no outlying charge here, everything is equal to 0. So the question is, what minus 6 is equal to 0? Well, that means that the oxidation state of sulfur is plus 6. Another example would be MnO4 minus. If we have MnO4 minus, oxygen is negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. They have to equal negative 1. So what minus 8 is equal to negative 1? That would make Mn to be a plus 7. Another thing we have to be able to do is balance redox reactions. So let's say we have copper that turns into, actually I want to make that copper 2 plus, that cop turns into copper solid, plus iron that turns into iron 3 plus. How I would balance this reaction is first, I've got to see who's oxidized and who's reduced. This copper goes from 2 plus to 0, so that means that it is reduced. So copper is reduced. And it is reduced by 2 electrons. The iron is going from 0 to plus 3, so that means it's oxidized because it's going up in charge. And it's oxidized by 3 electrons. We see that the electrons are unbalanced because there's three between the iron and two between the copper. So to balance that, we have to get the same number of electrons on both sides. So what we're going to do is multiply this side by three. So everything attached to the electron and bridge gets a three. And this side by two. So everything attached to that bridge for iron gets a two. And then right there would be our balanced redox reaction. Galvanic and electrolytic cells. So here's the differences between them. Galvanic cells are thermodynamically favorable. They get negative delta G's. They are basically making a battery. You have two half cells for the picture and your cathode is your positive terminal. For electrolytic cells, those are thermodynamically unfavorable, which gets a positive delta G. It needs a power source to be able to operate. It's usually contained in one cell, and the cathode is the negative terminal. One thing that you want to make sure you do not get confused with is the things that do not change no matter what type of cell that you have. If you have an electrolytic or a galvanic cell, that does not change the fact that the cathode is where reduction occurs. The anode is where oxidation occurs. And also, electrons will always flow from anode to cath cathode. Now looking at galvanic cells, all the different components that you have to be able to do. First, you need to label your cathode and electrode. So in this case, copper is the cathode and zinc is our anode. How we know which one is our cathode and anode is think of red cat. And as a matter of fact, fat red cat. What this is telling you is that reduction occurs at the cathode and that cathode is getting larger. It's gaining mass over time. For the anode, you need to think anox, and sometimes we say anorexic ox. And what that is telling you is that the anode, that is where oxidation occurs, and it is getting skinnier over time, so it's actually losing mass. You have to be able to write half reactions. Remember, half reactions are the things that have the electrons within it. So the overall reaction is copper 2 plus plus zinc yields zinc 2 plus plus copper. So if I draw this little electron bridge here, there's two electrons here. It's going from plus 2 to 0, so it's being reduced. And zinc is being oxidized by two electrons because it's going up in charge. So this zinc half reaction here is the oxidized reaction. 
where we write our electrons is to balance out the overall reaction. So since there's a plus two here and a zero here, we have to put the electrons on the left side to make the overall charge on the left zero as well. Electrons are over here on this side because we have two plus for the zinc and we have to balance out that charge to get a two minus. Another thing we have to be able to do is label our salt bridge. So in this salt bridge, we have NaSO4. And there's going to be a 2 right there because sulfate has a minus 2 charge. So one thing that you need to know is that cations always go to the cathode. And anions from our salt bridge always go to our anode. The reason for this is to balance out the charge buildup that's in the solutions. So the cation is going to the cathode because this solution is getting more negative over time. The anions go to the anode because this solution is getting more positive over time. So the whole purpose of the salt bridge is to balance out those charges. If I were ever to take that salt bridge out, my E cell, this voltmeter reading, which is E cell, it will automatically read zero. Another thing that you have to be able to do is tell where your electrons are flowing. Electrons always flow anode to cathode. So that is my electron flow. It doesn't matter if it's a galvanic or an electrolytic cell. The last thing you have to be able to do is cal calculate this E cell value. The way that I calculate that is by being given these E cell values for the half reactions. One thing that you need to know is that they will always give us reduction E cell values. So what we have to do is flip the one who's being oxidized. Since zinc is the one that is being oxidized, I have to flip this sign from positive 0.76 to negative 0.76. Actually, I think it was negative at the beginning, and then it was already flipped to positive. All right. So then after I flip the one who is being oxidized, then I add the two together to get my E mod cell. So that's where this 1.1 volts came from. For electrolytic cells, we have basically one container and we have our anode. In this case, our anode is positive, but our electrons are still flowing from anode to cathode. Reduction still occurs at the cathode and oxidation still occurs at the anode. <clears throat> right here on this other picture, we have the electrolysis of water. Where they like to ask questions about this is if we realize what the water equation is when we break it down, water breaks down to H2 plus O2. And we have to be able to balance that reaction. So we have twice as many H2 than we do oxygen. So when we see this gas being collected, we will have twice as much hydrogen than we do oxygen that's being collected. Calculations that you'll have to be able to use for electrochem. Delta G equals negative N phi. Remember that N stands for total moles transferred. This is where students get messed up because let's take that copper and iron example again. So the copper reduced. So we have copper and iron plus three. What we did here is we took this electron bridge. That one goes there and this one goes there. So we have two electrons and three electrons to balance. We put a two in front of the irons and threes in front of the coppers. So where we get our total moles transferred, which is N, is by looking at the total electrons on one of the bridge. So we have all together six electrons being transferred here. So that's what I would plug in for N. F is a constant. 
It stands for Faraday's constant, which is 96,500 coulombs for every mole of electron. And then E naught is what we found from our galvanic cell where we added up the two values after flipping the oxidized. Another equation for delta G is negative R T L N K. K is your equilibrium constant, T is your temperature, and R is your value that is in that, that your value that is in joules per mole Kelvin. One thing you need to watch out for is making sure that these units are in the same. Sometimes they give delta G in kilojoules per mole. So you have to be able to convert either my R or my delta G to get these two in the same units. Another thing you need to know is the Nernst equation. This is the Nernst equation right here. E cell, this is at non-standard conditions. Remember, non-standard conditions are one I molar. If we do not have one molar concentrations, then we have to use this Nernst equation. So that equation is the E naught cell, which is what it would be at standard conditions, minus 0 0.06 divided by, this is actually N. This is the same N that we have right here in this delta G equals negative NP equation times log of Q. And so this is an example of what we would have if we wanted to calculate the E cell with the Nernst equation. Now remember that this is for non-standard conditions. Calculations for electroplating and electrolytic cells. So one thing to note, that this is only for electrolytic cells. Um, they, this is where you use the Q equals IT equation. Q equals IT. So Q stands for charge, I stands for amps, and T stands for time in seconds. So let's say that we have copper that's being plated out from copper 2 plus, right? So copper 2 plus is turning into copper. We have 60 seconds and 5 amps. So we want to know what is the mass of the copper that will be plated out. How we would work this out is we would first have to figure out the charge and then we'd have to do some stitches. So we say Q equals IT, I is equal to amps, 5 amps, T is 60 seconds, so that would be how many coulombs we have. After we have coulombs all together, we're then going to do our stitches to get into mass. So we use Faraday's constant, 96,500 coulombs for every mole of electron. The next thing is we have to get rid of these mole of electrons. So we look at this transfer here. There's 2 plus to 0. So there's 2 electrons that are being converted. So what I'm going to say is that there's 2 moles of electrons for every 1 mole of copper. Now that I'm in moles of copper, I can easily get into grams of copper. So a mole of copper is equal to 63.55 grams. And then I would just work through my stitch and fi finish that out. Sign conventions for electrochem. Um, if I have delta G that is negative, remember this is for galvanic cells, then E cell is going to be positive and K is going to be greater than 1. If I have electrolytic cells, delta G is going to be positive, E cell is going to be negative, and my K value is going to be less than 1. This greater than 1 means that the products are favored. And less than 1 right here means that reactants are favored.